Let's translate John 3, verse 36. O pistevon iston wion, echi zoin eonion. O de apithon to wio, uk opsete zoin. Al e orgi tu theu many epavton. The one who believes in the Son has life eternal, but the one who disobeys the Son will not see life, but the anger of God remains on him. The one who believes in the Son has life eternal this is everlasting life but the one who disobeys the son does not or will not see life but the wrath of God remains on him. So you can see the parallelism here. The one who believes versus the one who disobeys. Now actually, apithon here, this is uh, from apitheo. And this is in the same word family as pitho. Pitho means to persuade. So when you add the uh, alpha to the beginning, it negates it. To not be persuaded. Well, for uh, this term and this word family, persuasion often comes with belief and obedience. And in this context here, you can see it, it runs parallel to pistevo, belief, to believe, to have faith, trust. But here, this is faith in action or the lack of faith in action. And as a result, this is along the lines of to disobey. So we have belief versus disbelief. We have obedience versus disobedience. So those who obey, those who believe the Son, they have life. Present tense. Present active indicative. Third person singular. He has everlasting life. I'm going to translate aeonion as everlasting, not eternal, because there is a beginning. So everlasting. This is important. This is present tense. The one who believes has it and has it now. But the one who disobeys the Son will not see life, will not experience life, will not witness life. So experience here, will not see life. We have accusative here because Pistevon often uses is, and so this here being a, a, an entire uh, nominative clause, it makes sense. Pistevon plus is East marks the object of the faith. So this all belongs together. This is our subject. Then we have our verb. Then we have our actual accusative direct object. Then we have our contrasting coordinating conjunction, de, and then our new subject, the one who disobeys. Now, this uh, verb can take a dative with dative of person. So... It marks who, who you are disobeying. So the one who disobeys, who, who are you disobeying? You're disobeying the son. That one will not see, will not experience life. Now it goes on to explain even further, contrasting again with all, which is Allah, 
not to be confused with Arabic Allah. This is in Greek, uh, a contrast adversative particle. So Allah can occur before independent clauses, which appears to be what we have here since we have our subject, we have a verb. Uh, this appears to be independent and uh, meaning it can exist on its own. And so Allah here indicates that the proceeding is settled. So the one who believes in the sun has life and has it now. The one who disobeys the sun will not experience life in the future. And so this Allah here gives us a transition to something new. But the wrath of God remains on him. However, it could be that Allah is simply indicating a transition to something different or contrasted, translated along the lines of but or yet. And as we've seen elsewhere in the New Testament, Allah may convey strong uh, asseveration. So translate it as surely, surely the wrath of God remains on him. However, there's a third option. The use of Allah in Johannine literature is noteworthy in that the parts contrasted are not always of equal standing grammatically. So it, you may end up translating it like rather. But the one who disobeys the son will not see life. Rather, the wrath of God remains on him. We have three possible translations here. Which one? is correct. Sometimes it's helpful, helpful to look at how various translations uh, are translating it. So let's take a look. The one who believes in the Son has eternal life, but the one who refuses to believe in the Son will not see life. Instead, the wrath of God remains on him. So this is a rather. This would be option uh, one from BDAG. But they... English Standard Version just takes the easy way out here. Just translates it, but. King James, but. We're going to skip the message. NASB, but. NIV has four. That's interesting. New King James, but. New Living, but. NRS, but. ASV, but Bible in basic English replaces it with a semicolon and doesn't, doesn't even translate it. But, 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 but God's word translation uses instead. So that's along the line of rather. Most of these just have but. New Century version just at, puts a period in instead. The New International Readers version does the same thing. NRSV, but, 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 Tyndale, but. only I knew Latin. I don't. But, 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 but. So most translations go with but, which would focus here. The other side of a matter. This is con comparing whole clauses. Transition to something different or contrasted. So, that's the sense most translations go with, and it's contrasting the disobedient. They're not going to see life. No, 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 no. In contrast, they're going to see the wrath, the wrath of God, the wrath of God that's already on them. And then, of course, we have ep, but the wrath of God remains on him. That's the one who is disobedient. 
epi here is accusative. It can mark location or surface. Well, we're not dealing with a physical location. We're not dealing with a physical surface. So this can't be it. Otherwise, it would be translated on. This doesn't make sense. No, instead, we got to go super far down here. Marker indicating the one to whom, for whom, or about whom something is done. This is translated to, on, or about. And it can be with accusative. However, this is for actions that are done to the recipient. And that doesn't seem to be the context. That doesn't quite match. 15, marker of feelings directed towards someone in, on, for, or toward. This matches perfectly. Wrath, feeling, directed toward him. So on. With accusative, after words that express belief, trust, or hope. Interesting. This is in close proximity. It's not the exact uh, syntax, but this is lurking in the shadows, as it were. Ah, that further bolsters this one here. So it appears to be marker of a feeling directed towards someone. So this wrath is directed toward the one who's disobedient. So the one who disobeys the son experiences God's wrath, which remains on them. In other words, they already have this wrath. So what's interesting is those who believe in the son, in contrast, are not going to experience this wrath. It's those that are disobedient to the son. They will experience the wrath that they already have upon them. So we have the one who believes in the son has everlasting life, everlasting life. But the one who disobeys the son will not experience life. But the wrath of God remains on him. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. Otherwise, Click the link to check out Hebrew and check out Greek, brush up on your biblical languages, and we will see you next time.